Welcome to our CRE online lessons. We are having a form for lesson today. My name is Mogita Robert, a teacher at KCI School, teacher of CRE and history. Uh, my number is already provided, just in case something you want to ask where you've not understood well, please be feel free to ask so that you can get answers to assist you to, to be prepared for this uh, CRE exam. The form 4 lesson, I will uh, urge the form 4 to subscribe to our channel, YouTube channel, Robert Mogita KC School Lessons, then listen to these lessons. The only advantage is when we record these lessons and you follow them online, you are able to adjust, pause where you've not understood, listen to the explanation again and again, so that makes it uh, simple. I want to encourage the form 4 that uh, exams are going to be done. Uh, they say, so we love to prepare constantly. Yes, we might be, not be very sure about the time of that exam. But let us keep on uh, learning and revising. Because if you revise and that time comes, you'll be well prepared. You'll pass your exam. And you see, that will determine your destiny, where you're going to land after. So prepare. We're going to discuss the topic work. Work is a form for topic. And it is tested in question 5 of paper 2 exam together with other topics up to the end of leisure. That is, uh, those are the topics tested from topic 1, introduction to Christian ethics, marriage, uh, human sexuality, family, uh, response to sexual behavior, then we have work, then leisure. Those are the topics tested in question 5, paper 2. We want to, these are the objectives we will cover in this topic. We want to define the term work and vocation. Explain the traditional African attitude towards work. What was the African traditional understanding of work? The role of professional. Explain the role of professional ethics, ethos, and courts in the society. We'll be able to explore the role played by professional ethics. Explain the virtues related to work. We'll see the virtues that are related to work. If you are working, then what are the virtues you need to uphold? Discuss the moral duties and responsibilities of employers and employees. What are the duties of employers, the duties of employees? Discuss the approaches to issues related to, related to work, to related to employment. We discuss that. Those are the things we are supposed to, we are supposed to do. Those are the objects we are supposed to cover. So we want to uh, begin by defining what work is. Work is the use of energy, be it physical energy or mental, for the purpose of improving human life. So that application of energy, using physical energy, mental power, mental energy, your intellect, for the purpose of improving human life, so you are working, that's what you are calling work. In physics, uh, you, you can have a different definition of it, but it's, uh, in a nutshell, that's what it means. Reasons why people work. Why should people work as human beings? Why should we work? And in an exam, we can be asked outline reasons why it's important for people to work. One of the reasons why people work is to develop the community. You work, you engage yourself in projects to develop your community where you are, the Kisi School community. People work to develop the Kisi School community by coming together and doing some projects in school. Second, we work to improve uh, living standards. You want to work, you want to teach, you want to involve yourself in business, you're working, you want to uh, write some work or book, is to improve the living standards. Third, to provide for their basic needs. People work so they can get food to eat, basic needs, you can get shelter, they can get food, clothes. So basic needs. So people work to get basic needs for self satisfaction and fulfillment. People work to get fulfillment. People teach to get fulfillment. You are satisfied when you work. You get fulfillment. When you complete some work, you are fulfilled. I've done my best. So that's why people work. People work to acquire independence. When you work, you don't depend on others because if you're not working, you're lazy. That means you will depend on others to provide for you. But when you work, you earn your own, that means you will be independent. You will be 
become independent so people work to have their own independence it's a professional requirement we work because we have been trained as teachers for example we are supposed to teach so it's a professional requirement that we must teach so we work because it's a professional requirement for teachers to teach it's God ordained God work for six days and rest on the seventh day so God ordained work to mean he also worked so we'll have to emulate that example of God who worked so we also work because Work is blessed by God. To develop one's talent fully, we work on our talents every time. You train, you work so that you, that talent is fully developed. It's an essential element of life. Apart from resting, apart from enjoying life, we must work. It's an ele essential element of life that we must work. So it's part of what life requires. Without work, life ceases to be. So if you don't work, then you are, it's, it's, it's as if you are not alive. So we must work for us to propagate life. Work makes and defines us. It gives us identity. For example, people call me Teacher Robert. It's because of my work. So work defines us, gives us identity. That is engineer Abel. So what does that tell you? That Abel is an engineer. Work defines us. That is Pastor Lawrence Morara. So work defines what Morara is doing is a pastor. Or that's pastor uh, Francis Osero. That work defines what they are doing. That is teacher Gladys. What does that mean? That is principal so and so. That is teacher Morris Ogutu, our school principal. Work defines who they are. So work gives us identity. If you are a doctor, that is Dr. Caesar. So Work defines who we are. It gives life direction and meaning and dignity. Life uh, gives us, work gives us direction. Because we have life objectives that we need to attain. That a specific time I should have done this in life. So it gives life meaning because when you are working then you project what you are supposed to do. To acquire wealth and status in life, in the society. People work so that they can acquire wealth. They get rich, so they acquire status in life. People respect people. Nowadays, it's not about age. Uh, sometimes back in a traditional African cultures, a person who was old was regarded with a lot of respect and given a lot of uh, reference. But nowadays, how much do you have? So it gives people, wealth gives people, people work to acquire wealth so they can acquire status in the society today. To socialize and grow as members, a member of the society, in its nature, work is a socializing agent. When you work, we don't work alone. We work in a company of other people, a group of doctors, a group of pastors, a group of teachers. So it ena work enables us to socialize. When we are working, uh, if, if you're working as a team of the media group team, Victor, and working with the, the, the other friends, so you socialize in that process. You become friends in the media team. So work is a socializing agent. It assists us to socialize and grow as members of the society. Um, we want to, after that, please remember that we have done, we have defined what work is, and uh, we have moved reasons why people work. We want now to move to terms related to work. There are these terms that are related to work that are almost similar to what uh, work is. It is a divine calling. So work is a divine calling. So we want to see the first term, vocation. Vocation, when you're talking about vocation, is a term related to work. Vocation is a divine calling to a particular work. You have been called to become a teacher. It's divine. What worked? God gave work divinity. So it's divine. So vocation is a vocation is a divine calling to a particular work. You have been called to become a doctor. You've been called to become a teacher. So it's a, a divine calling, vocation. Profession. I talk about profession, then we are saying uh, it's a paid occupation that requires education and specialized training, characterized by a code of ethics. So when you're in a profession, it's an occupation that requires training. A professional teacher, a professional doctor, a professional lawyer. It has taken you a period of time to train and acquire these skills in, to become a doctor and it has a code of ethics 
for example, the TSE code of the ethics, the teachers have, we have a professional code of ethics. And I'm sure the doctors have a code of ethics, how they're supposed to work. The lawyers still have. So it is a, that paid occupation that require education and specialized training. That's what we call a profession. Another term related to work is a trade, a way of making a living, a trade, a way of making a living. How do you make your living? I make my living by becoming a professional doctor. It's, it's another name related to work. Career. One is, one is occupation which has evolved over many years of hard work and consistency. A career is a long term. A, I'm a career teacher. You see, it has taken you time to build and become a teacher. This is a, a doctor. Doctor, being a doctor, being a teacher is my career. Being a doctor is my career. It has taken time to build that occupation. A craft, it is an occupation that requires manipulation of skills, artwork, you become a carpenter, that is a craft. A job, these are tasks performed or services rendered in return for payment, a job. You do a job, you are given money. You do production work, you are given money. That is a job that uh, you do and you get money. The next subtopic will be, what are the factors that one considers when joining a career? And of course this can be asked on an exam. Outline factors uh, that one considers, one should consider when joining a career. What are the factors that one should consider when you are joining a career? One is uh, income. What is the income that you are going to get from this career that you are, you are joining? Uh, the, other time, the other point is what is the interest? Do you have interest in this career? that you are interested in ability. You, do you have the ability, do you have the interest to, to do this career? Available opportunities. Do we have the available opportunities for doctor, for, for example, teachers, you are, do we have available opportunities for the same? Compatibility of one's faith. Do we have, uh, if you are a church member, you are going to church, then is this work that you are going to do compatible to your faith, to your religion? Educational requirements, academic qualifications, uh, what are the requirements? If it's, uh, the requirement is be having a degree, do you have a degree? So these are the factors that you need to consider when uh, you want to choose a career. They need to serve others. When you are doing work, we are serving others. So they need to serve others. Will also necessitate you to choose a certain career, so that you are not uh, a sol in a solitary career that you do not want. What is the income generated? People want to become engineers and doctors because they think they will earn more money. So that's one another factor that you think like if you become a doctor you will get more money than one who is uh, not a doctor, for example. So people do that for the sake of that. Want to move to another subtopic. Uh, traditional African attitudes, understanding towards work. How do Africans understand work? And this uh, has been asked in a national exam. Explain the traditional African understanding about work. How, how do the Africans understand work? Work is a way of life. It's highly valued and every able-bodied person was expected to work. So in traditional African society, in our African cultures, work was a must. Work was highly valued and every able-bodied person was expected to work. Unless you were disabled or you were not able to work. So everybody was supposed to work. Everybody was a worker, except the young, the sick and the old. So everybody was supposed to work, except the people who were young, the young people who could not be able to work, the sick and the old. Work was seen as the most important aspect of life, as it provided the livelihood of individuals in the society. So work was the very most important because it provided livelihood for individuals. What are we saying here? It provided, it gave people what to eat. When they worked, they got what, uh, they acquired livelihood from the work they did. They, were, uh, they, they did artwork, then they got benefits out of it. 
laziness talk idol was highly condemned traditional african society you could not afford to be lazy because it was not uh, you could not survive uh, being lazy so laziness was discouraged uh, in traditional african society the type of the of work members of the committee participated in depend on the environment if the environment was fertile with their fertile land then they could do farming so the type of work that people did in traditional African community depend on the environment they found themselves in. Work was a social activity. It's communal. People came during planting. People came to do work together during harvesting. So work was communal. People assisted each other. It's now that work is becoming individualized. But traditional African community, work was a communal. Work was closely related to religious life. That is why uh, John Mbiti uh, as said is very clearly that Africans were notoriously religious in everything they did work per, uh, religion permeated in every aspect of life so work was closely related to religious life because when the Africans were planting when they went for planting they did some sacrifices for God to ensure that what they were planting came to, uh, to did well when they are harvesting they are thank, giving thanksgiving sacrificing to God so work was closely related to religious life. There was a division of labor according to age, gender, and rank. So work was divided according to age. The young people could do a certain kind of job. Gender, male, children could go to take care of the flock. And uh, the, the ladies, could, the girls could go and fetch firewood. The rank, the elders, and the chiefs, the some work they could not do. So there was a division of labor in traditional African society. No work was despised. And like nowadays where people despise manual work, in traditional African society, work was valued. Every work, every type of work was valued. So people could do any type of work. But nowadays people are going for white collar jobs and they, are, they do not care much about the blue collar jobs. So we finished the traditional African teaching about work. What was the attitude of work in traditional African society? We want to see, uh, in Form 1, <clears throat> when we were doing creation stories, we discussed uh, about work during the creation stories. So we want to look at what is the Christian teaching about work. Uh, work is ordained by God. So God began work. His work. He worked for six days and rested on the, on the seventh day. So God began work. Two, human beings should work to subdue, conquer the earth. You see, uh, human beings are supposed to work to subdue because we, we were given a responsibility to subdue the earth. How do we subdue the earth? Coming up with novel ideas of doing things, working. God himself worked. So work is good. So Christ teaches that work is good and we should work also. God blesses hard work. Work is rewarded. When we do work, uh, God blesses our hard work. So God, uh, work is blessed. <laughs> Christians should work to acquire basic needs, so necessities. So the Bible teaches that for us to acquire basic needs, then we need to work to acquire those basic needs. Then we have human beings are co-created with God through work. We were, we were given a response to be co-created with work. We cannot continue God's, with work, God's work of creation if we don't work. So by working, we become co-creators with God. Christians should work to assist those who are in need or who are needy. Those who are in need, the less fortunate, for us to assist them, then we need to work for us to have something to assist them and uh, so that they, they get something from us. Christians should work to emulate Jesus. Jesus was a worker and sometimes we say Jesus the carpenter. So because Jesus was working, we also need to work to emulate Jesus also works because we are Christians, we follow Jesus. Christians should not overwork and slave others. Bible teaches that we should not overwork, we should not enslave others to work for us. Those who work should get a just wage. It is biblical that when a person has worked, give that person a fair wage for the work done. Work should be accompanied with rest. Of course, after work, we will go for leisure. Uh, so, work should be accompanied by, by, by rest. God worked for six days and rested on the seventh day. So, as Christians also, we should do the same. People should work faithfully, stock diligently. If you've been given work by your employer, do not get unfair wages and you are not working. So you should work faithfully and diligently. Work should be done in an orderly manner. God worked in terms of days. The first day God did this. 
So we should be orderly in the way we work. Work became a curse and pleasant when human beings felt, felt into sin. When uh, human beings, uh, the first man, work became a curse because they fall into sin. So they were cursed. They were told to sweat for them to get a, to earn a living. So it became a curse. Work became a curse when uh, human beings could not uh, obey God. We want to look at the similarities. So we have done uh, the traditional African understanding of work. We've done the Christian teaching of, uh, of work. So we want to look at the similarities between traditional African and Christian view on work. What are the similarities? <clears throat> and in the exam, when you see such a question of similarities, you must begin with the word in both. If you ask, I'll clear the similarities between traditional African and Christian view on work. Every time you ask similarity question, begin with in both. If you ask differences, then you use comparative terms. You say in traditional African society this was happening, why or whereas, use those terms to answer such questions in the exam. So we are looking at the similarities between traditional African and Christian view on work. One, in both, work is mainly for the purpose of acquiring basic needs. So in both Christian teaching and traditional African teaching, basically we work to attain uh, basic needs. In both, work is ordained by God. Traditional African society, people believed that work uh, was ordained by God. God worked, so we also work because God worked. In both, rest is encouraged after work. Leisure, that's to mean leisure. So it means that after working, uh, the Bible teaches that we should rest. The same way in traditional African society, people worked and rested. After working, they enjoyed what they were doing. In both, work is a duty done in obedience to God. So we work because it's a duty for us to work. God or commanded us, work, subdue the, the earth by working. In both, hard work is emphasized. Traditional African community, laziness was, uh, was highly condemned. In the Bible, those who, the Bible teaches, Paul says, that those who work, would not work should not be given food. So, in both, work, uh, hard work is emphasized and laziness is condemned. In both, talents, abilities are developed through work. People work to become artisans. People work blacksmiths. So they develop their talents by working in both. Even in Christianity, we still say that you must work to develop your talents. In both, work promotes socialization. This we have emphasized even from the definition, oh, this is why people work. People work to socialize, to come together. In the process of working as a team of teachers, we come together and socialize. We want to, we've uh, looked at the similarities. We want to look at how Jesus appealed the dignity of work. Ways in which Jesus upheld the dignity of work during his work and ministry. During Jesus' ministry, he also worked and demonstrated that people should work. Jesus was a worker. He worked like any other person. That's why we call him Jesus was a carpenter. So we say Jesus also worked. He established God's kingdom by doing the work of preaching. He did the work of preaching, forgiving, and performing miracles. So he upheld the, the dignity of work by himself working. Establish God's kingdom by working hard, performing miracles, preaching. He called different workers to be his disciples. He, uh, if the first disciples he called were fishermen. People, the, the call of the first disciples, chapter 5 of Luke, verse 1 to 11, he calls people, well, other people were tax collectors. So he called different workers to be his disciples. So he upheld work. He considered work to be very important. He used to work to make his teachings clearer, like the parable of the sower. The sower is going to sow seeds. So he uses work to make his teachings clearer. He gave advice that promoted work. So he gave ad people to work. So he gave advice that promoted work. He discouraged overworking. That is why himself, he, he went for resting during the Sabbath. Then he, uh, he promoted division of labor by commissioning his disciples to do different works. So he told his disciples, he commissioned them to go and do different works. So he valued work because even the disciples, he saw them do, he assigned them different responsibilities. He found fulfillment in work. He never complained about work. He was working, but he never complained. So he got fulfillment. He discouraged child labor by calling adults to be his disciples. Okay, in his, uh, in his work of uh, doing, the, of calling the disciples, he did not call young children, but he called the, the old people to become disciples. So he was uh, against child abuse. I want to say that we did not finish, we have um, covered 
the first two objectives and uh, next time we will continue with other objectives so we have covered we have defi defi defined work uh, we have seen at terms related to work we have seen reasons why people work we have again seen uh, the traditional African understanding of work we have again looked at the similarities between the traditional African understanding of work and Christian understanding of work we have also seen the Christian teachings about work then lastly we have looked at how Jesus upheld the dignity of work so we will continue from there next time I want to advise you to be on the lookout for our online lessons classes for you to keep yourself updated Please read, read this content, pause where you do not understand, let us know where you not, it is not clear to you. Uh, I'll be of much help to you as Form 4 candidates. Uh, you will be, I'll be of great help to you. Uh, I examine paper 2 and I'm sure if you have any issue on how to answer these questions, the questions that uh, can be asked, how are you going to respond, the issues we look at, so I, I will guide you to, to answer such questions. So I thank God for you uh, as we are waiting for the reopening of the schools and praying that this pandemic comes to an end and we all will live with it in a positive way. And when we are safe, please, my students, candidates, please go through this work and I'm sure that all will be well for you. Otherwise, I wish you well and may God bless you so much.